two doing tonight? We're doing great. Great. What parts do you play? Um, I play the secretary and part of the ensemble. Two parts. And I play Bethy. Bethy uh, Bailey. Oh. Yeah. Probably the little girl. Yeah. How did I know? <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Videotape. Ah! All the stars. <laughs> Where? Yeah. Where? 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 Okay, All what I'll get you guys to do is just introduce yourselves here. And start getting dressing rooms. And say what all. part you're playing tonight. I'm uh, Dean Constable and I'm playing a Dominic, an Italian boy, with my two brothers. Where, which are your two brothers? He, this, uh, him? They're the I'm three skinny tenors. Yeah. yeah. I'm Joey. And they're also martinis, but don't drink them. Yeah, I'm, I'm his brother for one part. Mm -hmm. My name's Anthony, and uh, I'm also a detective in the last. So we're gonna be busy. Yeah. What about Rick over here? Oh well, I'll put the last name in there. It's McPhee. Rick McPhee, in case yeah. there's an agent looking. <laughs> yes. Uh, I play Dan, uh, ooh, Sam Wainwright, a uh, friend of George's, who seems to get everything in life that he wants without any effort at all. It's perfect for me. Uh, kind of alternative casting. Thank you. Okay. Have fun. Oh, it is. It's a fun role. I get to sing and dance and make a fool of myself. It's great. Okay. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. And what's your real name? Anders Balderston. And what are you going to be doing tonight? I'm playing Paul. I'm, one, I'm Dominic and Anthony's brother. The <laughs> other brother. The other brother. We sing the Larry Mar song. Larry, Daryl, and Daryl. Yep. <laughs> and who do we have behind you here? This is the wonderful, <laughs> talented Scott. Hi. <laughs> Putting his hair makeup thing Scott on. Scott looks like he's going to be the police officer. You got it. Yeah. Good guy. For a change? For a change. Do you like the part? Love the part. Why? Look over here now. I don't know. I just love theater. Musical theater. Nothing any better. Okay, have fun. Uh, thank you. Hello. You know who gave them to me? Who? Sylvia. Oh, she you said I flowers. complained so much that I never That's got flowers from my sweet. mom and dad that she went and gave me flowers. Made That's me cry. Sweet. And, and what part are you playing tonight? I'm the master Sarah. Mistress. Mistress of ceremonies. And what else am I? And I'm Sarah at the bank, building alone. Chastity. And what are you playing tonight? I am playing Violet Bick, the sexy, savvy Violet Bick. <laughs> Were you made for the part? <laughs> Was I made for the part? Uh, I think Violet's quite different than me, but it gives me a chance to uh, experience that type of character and that to, to decide, wow, you know, like this is what a sexy person, this is the attention that she gets. And to be something that I'm not, and it's just a fun part of play. Okay, have fun tonight.
You think so? What's your name? Mine? Yeah, the Karen, real name. Karen McCannell. Hi, Karen. Hi. And you're playing Mary tonight? Yes. Uh, can you tell me what you like about this show? Um, I like uh, the music a lot, an awful lot. And I think it adds a lot to the show. Mm -hmm. um, as a musical, of course, I suppose it would. So and you've probably seen it a few times. Yeah, it's actually one of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the, the music and incorporating the music in the, in the show is a great thing. Mm -hmm. So it gives everybody an extra added lift to it, something more to enjoy. Well, thank you. Welcome. Have fun. Yeah, well, thanks. But if ruins is what you want, ruins is what we got. <laughs> Who needs trips to Paris, Budapest, and Rome? We'll have a wonderful night at home, sweet home. No majestic stateroom offered by Cunard. We'll have a wonderful Yep, tell him. This year, Europe. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. Need a taxi? Yep, gotta be on that 8 a.m. train to New York. Pick you up 7.30. Europe? Wow! Hey, that's just the beginning. Every summer I'll be traveling to someplace new. Your appetite be your guide. Any restaurant, anywhere. When they hand you their bill of fare. You won't have to think twice. You won't have to think twice. First class all the way. First class all the way. Well? My mouth is watering. Is it a deal? I know I, I should jump at this, but... You needn't give me your answer now. Talk it over with your wife. Just one thing, Mr. Potter. Yes? What about the building and loan? The building and loan is petty cash. Forget about it. George, you're not afraid of success, are you? Some men can't handle it. No. I know what you're buying for that 15000 You're worth it to it's me, It's the George. building and loan, isn't it? You've been trying to knock us off for years. Do you want the job or not? 15,000, no. Make that 20,000 a year and a three year contract. Oh, you are a tempter. You spin your shiny webs and all of us hungry spider flies walk right into them. All right, Which entitles George. you to believe that the whole world revolves around your money. That's enough. Which it does, to a point. But you know, in the vast configuration of things, I would say that for all your money, People like you are nothing but calculating little spiders. Get out! Astute, shrewd, perceptive, but still spiders. I said get out! I will. I'm not stepping into your parlor. I wouldn't hire you now if you were the only man in town who could count. Now get the hell out of this office! I'm going. And if you
you'd like to s still like to send over that box of cigars, send them over to the building and loan. I'll be there. Harriet! My wife said to me, Clarence, don't be depressed. Everyone must excel at something. Your specialty is failure. Well, uh, Tempest Fugit, Clarence. Now, I want to show you several things that happened on June the 15th, 1935. So concentrate. What you see is a new house in a section of Bailey Park on the outskirts of Bedford Falls. Oh, Joe! My home, Joe! Oh, George, they no understand. Ah, you want to compliment our home, eh? Well, you listen. Maybe you learn something, huh? Okay. George, this is for you. When you hold your own home, you walk with pride. Your heart becomes light as soon as you step inside. You feel like a king. You feel like a queen. Why won't you believe I'm who I say I am? Because I know who you are. The ghost of Christmas past, come to do me good. What? Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol? Oh, I know what it is. Mr. Dickens reads it to us every Christmas. <laughs> Lovely man, Dickens, but <laughs> long-winded. Aw, oh, knock it off. I gotta get out of here. Just get it over with. I wish I'd never been born. Wait! Never been born? What a heavenly idea! Yes, that should do it. What do you think? Sparadine? Uncle Billy? Hey, Billy. Want a drink? Run! Give him a drink. How many times I tell you, don't come in here bothering the customer? Get out! Hey, what are you doing? We don't allow no dead be here, huh? Mr. Martin, that's Uncle Billy. I'll pay for his drinks. Uncle Ooh. Billy, are you all right? Hey, pal. I ain't your uncle. But, but for a shot and a beer, I can be your uncle or your aunt or anybody you want. Then you know he was run over by a truck when he was eight years old. Now beat it! Please, Mom! Take away from me! Something happened. I can't explain it. Please let me come in and lie down. Get the hell out of here before I call the police. Uh, Mom! Yeah. Oh, Betty, Tommy, come give your dad a hug. Oh, he doesn't deserve it, but he could use it. Daddy, oh. Daddy, Daddy! Oh, what are you doing out of bed? Mommy said my temperature is normal. 68.9. <laughs> George, George, where oh, were you? Oh, let me touch you. Let me touch you. Oh, you're real, you're real. You have no idea what happened to me. You have no idea what's happened. I don't? Harry's here. That's part of it. What do you mean? You'll see.